are going. Okay. So, uh, I've heard a few times recently people talking about not having a good idea of what to do essentially with, with equipment. Uh, like, so what I'm wanting to do is very, very beginner introductory classes into sets of equipment. Uh, so, uh, I've already done a couple of things with like down spear and single short sword. You can check those out. Uh, but what I'm wanting to do is cover very, very basic Florentine, very, very, very basic sword and shield type things. Uh, so with me is Kenshin, and uh, we're just going to kind of go through it. So uh, we're starting with Florentine, and uh, with Florentine, it the, the kind of obvious, you know, upside is that you have two swords to hit someone with and the downside is that you have no shield to defend yourself with so so all of your blocking has to be very very active um the the difficulty that a lot of people run into is what to do with two swords at the same time uh and the fact that it there kind of requires a lot of processing power to actively concentrate on two different things that you're doing so a big part of Florentine is really getting familiarity with certain things. So you don't have to think about it as hard, but we'll get to that as we go along. Um, so for the basic thing for Florentine, there's a couple of different ideas on this, uh, but stance is going to be very important. So uh, my stance kind of shifts a, a, a fair amount, but you'll see, you'll see different people advocate for different types of things. Uh, swords a little bit apart, swords together, swords not symmetrical. Um, Find a stance that works for you that generally covers both sides of your body with both of your weapons. There's definitely going to be some discussion about that, but if we're just starting at the basic spot, then, then having your, your feet about shoulder width apart, uh, pick whichever leg feels more comfortable to be forward, to be forward, and have your arms about even with each other and your swords at about shoulder width. This is gonna be kind of a basic stance. You're gonna adjust it as you get more and more experience but this is kind of what I would suggest as the starting point just to get familiar with not dying instantaneously. Um, now, uh, when you're using Florentine, one of the things that you need to know right off the bat is that especially if you look like you don't know what you're doing, your opponent is going to try to stab you immediately. Uh, so the, the, the issue is that with two swords up like this, like I talked about, the area directly between them is, is that is the, the fastest you know way between two points is a straight line and your opponent will find that straight line into your torso uh, and if you don't get good at blocking or get good at you know moving and, and utilizing footwork you will be stab bait until you figure out what to do against that now the, the most accepted block for for that is to push across with your off hand it, there are certain disadvantages to this, um, but you, you, you push across with the offhand and that puts their sword out of line with you. Uh, you can, if you'd like, step forward while doing this and aggress, which is what Jake had done when, when I had blocked originally there. You can also step back and do this and, and reset to a different position. It's, it's less aggressive, but less susceptible to your opponent just deciding to swing on you while that's happening. Uh, and, and, and killing you anyway. Um, so that is the most basic block for it. Uh, my personal recommendation, which we've done in a different video, is to cycle the block through so you catch the stab behind the tip and push it instead of coming past your, your right hip as a right-handed person blocking with the, the left sword. You cycle it through so it goes past the left hip. Now, what I like about this is that if your opponent is faking a stab and you push across, you you open yourself up to a lot of pain, uh, a lot of grief, and a lot of getting hit. Uh, whereas if you cycle through and your opponent fakes a stab, your sword kind of comes back to the same position. Now, you're going to lose some time on it, but your sword comes back up on its own, and that's something that I'm particularly fond of. Uh, so... I go more in depth than that in, in other videos. I think it's my like basic fighting video. Uh, so feel free to check that one out if you would like. Um, but then another good concept is just not being there. One of the one of the things about Florentine is that more so than most other equipment choices, 
uh, relying on your equipment to keep you safe is not going to be super duper consistent, pretty much no matter how good you are. So a valid response to the stab is just to back out of range. Okay, uh, if you're a little bit more bold, you can shift off center line and, and do things like that, and you can use your footwork to, to defend against things. Uh, but whether it's a stab or a slash or anything like that, get comfortable moving with Florentine because uh, just saying, I assume my swords are going to block things and wading in is a good way to get most flow fighters killed very, very quickly. Um, so outside of, outside of get ready to be stabbed, uh, you're also going to get hit on the forearms a lot, as as they are relatively easy to get both outside shots and inside shots. Yeah, um, so there's going to be a couple of different ways that you can get around this. Uh, one of which is my personal favorite is moving the arms out of the way when they swing for it. You know, moving the hand back uh, and, and making sure that, that the target they're swinging for is no longer there. Um, doing things like like rolling your wrist out for a block makes it so that you cut the angle off very effectively on outside blocks. You can do the same thing inside. If they, if they chop in for that way, you can, you can roll the wrist this way. Um, there was a discussion recently that I saw online talking about wrist strength and that being something that not everybody has. That's 100% true. Uh, but if you can pull off those sorts of blocks consistently, it is a good way to avoid what you know your opponent is going to try to do. Uh, now, some of the things about Florentine that uh, you have strengths on is that outside of the stab, very few people are going to try to kill a flow fighter with a torso shot off the bat, because you're essentially having to reach past two swords to get there. At least that's my personal experience. Once you start to get to be reasonably experienced as a flow fighter, very few people aim for the torso from the get-go. Um, now, one thing to worry about, though, is that flow fighters are very susceptible to getting hit in the leg. Like I said, mobility is, is very key to surviving. And if you can hit a flow fighter in the leg, they can't be mobile and they can't defend themselves as well, and they will usually die pretty quickly. Uh, now, the, the counter for this is twofold, one of which is uh, the legs should be able to defend themselves. Trying to block the legs is going to get you blocked horribly, horribly out of position for pretty much anything else. But my opponent's swinging for my knee, and me scooting back, whether I throw the counter shot or not is irrelevant. My legs should be able to keep myself safe. Now, there are times, though, when your opponent is going to commit very, very heavily into an attack to your leg, right? I mean, they're, they're going to come up, yeah, something like that. Now, the advantage with Florentine here comes down to the, the, the most basic concept of it, which is I have two swords to swing with. If you know you're going to get hit in the leg, uh, let it happen and just hit your opponent multiple times as they do it. Except the fact that getting hit in the leg is bad, but your opponent died for it, hopefully they won't do that in the future. Uh, from then on, watch your spacing against that particular opponent, and make sure that other opponents don't have as many opportunities to do that moving forward. Um, so, that's the basic idea though, is be comfortable moving, uh, be comfortable punishing your opponent for going for legs, and watch out for stabs. So now we're going to go into some of the, the equipment-specific offensive abilities. Uh, so with Florentine on Florentine, it's, it's kind of been done to death. And there's not a huge amount of how to make it simple. So what I will say, uh, we'll, we'll get to the shield in a second. I'm just going to go through this real fast. Um, so what I will say, though, is that the, the idea that it's very hard to concentrate on two things at the same time applies enormously to Florentine fighting uh, against Florentine fighting. So what you want to do is you want to throw a shot and this is all very general concepts, that's, that's the goal of this. You want to throw a shot that makes your opponent commit to, to a block that brings their defense out of, out of position, right? Now from here, you can do one of two things. You can either attack the spot that the defense is left, but that means committing both of your weapons to one part of your opponent, or you can bring one block out of position with a shot that you are familiar with so you don't have to devote a lot of processing power to, and then attack the other side, trying to get a kill in before your opponent can, can start concentrating on both arms at the same time. Um, both these are going to have their risks. There's going to be about a thousand different ways of doing both of them. Uh, but again, talking about people just not having a general idea of what to do with it is what I'm trying to address here. And that's the general idea, is find a spot where you can go and, and swing and, and bring their block out of position and attack that spot. Uh, using mobility is always good. So that, that last one that I did here, right? if I 
drift this way, I'm moving away from my opponent's offense. If I drift this way, I'm moving away from my opponent's offense. And the, the downside of them having a sword to hit me with while I'm concentrating two swords against one of theirs goes away. Uh, so, so be aware of that. These are the sorts of things you're going to want to do. And of course, once you get comfortable with it, stab the stuffing out of your opponent. Uh, because that was that is going to work just as well against them as it does against you if you're forging a point. Yeah, let me grab the, the strap shield to go with that now. Um, and, and these, uh, I'm intending for these to be short videos, we're just going to kind of roll right along. I'm not going to go into a ton of particulars, just real general ideas. Now, strap shields are going to present their own particular problems with flow fighters, because a lot of what you're going to be trying to do in a general sense is moving your opponent's block, and a strap shield the intent behind it is to leave it in place, which means that one of the things that you're, or which means what you're going to be trying to do is to either draw your opponent out and, and, and swing at you, at which point, after their arm is past their shield, then they their, their shield is no longer in play and you have two swords against their one. Or you are going to see an opponent that's turtling up and waiting for you to expend yourself offensively, and then they're going to counter and kill you. Uh, so, what I would suggest is, is figuring out generally what type of opponent you're fighting against. Uh, that is usually pretty easy by if they swing when you come up, they're the first type. <laughs> if they don't swing when you come up, they're probably the second one, or they're a patient first one to watch out for them. Uh, <laughs> um, but, but again, what, what this comes down to is... Uh, for me personally, as a taller fighter, I'm going to try to use a lot of distance control. I'm going to try to goad my opponent into swinging, and then once my opponent swings, I'm going to drill that side. Um, and at that point, I can start doing things like throwing combos. I think that that is an area that, that most new fighters have, have the most trouble with, is that a lot of new fighters will, will get the block, and they'll throw the shot, and they'll sit there waiting for their opponent to react. And, and there are simply better ways of doing it. Uh, if I get that first swing, I can very, very easily turn that into a kill in one of a dozen different ways just by swinging for another limb. Uh, once you have the offensive advantage, do what you can to keep the offensive advantage. Uh, this is just kind of a general rule for fighting. Uh, the, the caveat to that whole thing is recognize when you don't have it anymore because you're about to die if you keep on pressing something you don't have. <laughs> Um, so, the other bit though is if my opponent is more defensive, they, 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 they turtle in, they're waiting for me to, to expend offensively. This is one of the areas that Florentine kind of really shines in, is that you have the ability against someone with a strap shield to commit to large shots that open up their defense in different ways, right? So, so if I'm going to press up against, or so if I'm going to go up against someone, who has a strap shield and they are just waiting for me offensively to do something, I can start with something like an attack on their sword side shoulder, which then, as they respond to, I can get shots into a different spot that, they, that the block is no longer able to, to do something against. I can go shoulder shoulder, I can go different directions here, and, and really a lot of this is just quadrant theory, uh, so search up videos on that one if you haven't already. Uh, but the idea is that I have twice as much offensive power, and if my opponent is ceding offensive initiative to me, uh, then I should be able to overwhelm their defense, uh, at least if I'm going to be able to beat my opponent, that's going to be how it's going to happen. Uh, there are other ways of doing it, but I'd say that's more advanced videos and stuff like that. Um, things like going and pressing against your opponent, waiting for them to start to shift offense, and then scooting out of the way. And essentially you're combining the two styles. Uh, but that's gonna be more advanced stuff than what I'm wanting to cover here, so we're not gonna go into that heavily. Um, do you have anything you want to add on Florentine for just the basics of equipment, or...? Um, just... Uh, Florentine fighting is a lot about uh, tempo control too. Um, so you know, make sure that you're you're keeping a, keeping a count in your head, uh, so you can you can kind of know when your moments to capitalize are. So here, let me see what you're doing. So what I, what I mean by that is, as soon as I step, I should be, you know, I should I should have the next 
two beats in mind. Um, so if you're starting from this position with your with an offensive foot forward, this this in this case my diamond hand, I'm gonna do something along the lines of like a stab thing and uh, and then you know, something up here in this other rule, which which Big Head said uh, is basically just quadrant theory. Uh, but don't forget to uh, to keep in mind that, that, that your tempo and being able to predict what your opponent's tempo is is a way to, to essentially rearrange the order of a fight. So if, if, if he expects, sorry about the head, sorry about that. <laughs> and then I, I do something like, you know, I, t I put an extra step, an extra half beat in there between those shots so he can maybe see me coming down here and then setting up for something. And then, you know, I, I keep my defense here while I, actually, I actually am gonna take that shot. It's just maybe gonna take place at a different time than he anticipated. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and tempo control is something I usually can't explain very well because I try to just, most of what I do is disrupting my opponent's tempo, not setting my own. Uh, for those of you who fight me on a pretty regular basis, that's like 90% of what's going on in my head is how to mess up my opponent's plan. Yeah, so, um, but uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean you shouldn't have a plan. Correct, correct. Um, so I'm going to hit stop here. We're going to, that's going to be it for the, the Florentine video. We'll go on to the next one.